Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create some 3D text in Adobe Illustrator. Rightio, so we're now in Illustrator. First of all, I'm going to grab the type tool, click anywhere, and type some text. I'm going to go with Hello World. Ah, oh, classic. Next, with the text selected, I can change the alignment to center, and I'm definitely going to make the text bigger, because at the moment, it's tiny. There we go, that's much more legible. Now I'm going to pick a font. I'm going to go with Control Point, which is a custom font currently in development. And I'm going to decrease the leading slightly. Leading is the space in between the lines. There we go, slowly decreasing that leading. And I'm actually going to bring the leading in very tight because when the text is 3D, I want the words to stack perfectly. Okay, that's looking good. So with the main selection tool, I'm gonna to hold Shift and scale this up from the corner and then pop it in the center. Next, from the fill color picker, I'm going to double click on one of the lightest grays, check global, and then click OK. I'm next going to do the same for a slightly darker gray, and again, an even darker gray. So I've got my three gray global swatches. I'm now going to pick the lightest one for my text color. Now I can grab the rectangle tool and draw a big box. There we go. I'm going to resize this to fit the artboard. And then I can right click go to Arrange and send to Back. Next, I'm going to go to the Gradient panel. If you don't see this, go to the window drop down at the top. And you can see I'm starting with the default black to white gradient. I can reverse it, adjust the angle, but I can also double click on the swatches and I can pick my own colors. So I've got the medium gray here for one and then the lightest gray for the other. Now with the giant rectangle selected, I can go to Object, Lock and Selection, just so I don't move it around by mistake. Now with my text selected, I can go to type and create outlines. So Illustrator will now treat my text like a regular shape. The text is no longer editable and I can go to edit copy and then edit paste in place. And with this copy selected, I can then select the darkest of my three swatches from the swatches panel and then scale this down towards the center holding alt or option and shift. I can then right click this text, go to arrange and select send backward. This will make sure it's behind the white text. And with both text objects selected, I can go to object, blend and select make. And you can see we have this kind of in between stage, which doesn't look quite right. So let's go back to object, blend and select blend options. Make sure the preview box is checked. And then from the drop down, let's select specified steps. Increase the number using the arrow keys or just enter in a really high value. The higher the number, the smoother the gradient. So I'm gonna go with 500 and I can double click the object to go inside. And if I move either of these text objects around, Illustrator will try and maintain that blend accordingly. And the same works for swatches. So if I change one of the colors, that graduation from one color to another will be updated. Now I can hop into outline mode with command or control Y. This technique can oftentimes make it much easier to make a selection. So in this case, I want to select the smaller text at the back. And now I've made this selection, I can come out of outline mode, pick a different color, and you can see it updates in real time. And I'm actually going to double click this color, check global, and now I have a much, much darker gray. And if I make that text smaller or larger, that blend is also updated. Ooh, no, that looks terrible. Once you're finished, you can come out of isolation mode by clicking the arrow in the top left corner. But I am going to quickly double click the text to go back inside, select that top text, go to edit, copy, come back out of isolation mode, and then go to edit and select paste in front. And with the text selected, which technically isn't text anymore, I can then select the eyedropper tool and click on the background. This will apply that gradient to the text. And then from the gradient panel, I can make some adjustments to the settings. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the gradient is applied to each shape individually. To apply it to the entire object as a whole, go to object, down to compound path and select make. If it does do this and changes it to a weird random color, just resample that gradient again and reapply those settings. Next, I'm going to select the text Press A, which is the shortcut for the direct selection tool. Copy and paste this in place. And then from the transform panel on the right, click this icon to flip the text vertically. I can then drag this down holding shift until it lines up with the bottom of the text. 
this is going to be for the reflection. And again, I'm going to right click this, go to arrange and send backward, just to make sure it's behind the main text. Then I can go and refine the gradient settings from the gradient panel, or I can simply go to the swatches panel, select the default black to white gradient, and then refine this from the gradient panel instead. And I'm just going to spend a moment customizing the gradient. Ultimately, the goal is to have white on top, and then on the bottom is going to be transparent. So whatever color swatch I use for the bottom part of the upside down text that isn't text, it will need to be 0% opacity. There we go, looking very nice, very nice. Next, I'm going to select the text, copy and paste in place again. And then from the swatches panel, I'm going to select the darkest gray global swatch. Now I can go to Effect, down to Distort and Transform, and select Free Distort. I'm going to use this to make this look like a shadow underneath the main text, so I'm going to pull these top two anchor points down so it looks like it's flat. And you'll need to try and match the angle of the shadow to the rest of your composition, but if you do get it wrong, you can edit the Free Distort effect from the Appearance panel on the right. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of Gaussian Blur to that shadow just to soften those edges. Now that's all set up, I can change the color swatch or bring the opacity down if I'd like to make it a bit more subtle. I can do the same for the reflection as well. So let's just bring that opacity down a pinch. And you can also use the gradient tool if you'd like to adjust the gradient of your text out in the field. Out in the field? What am I talking about? I do come out with some nonsense sometimes, don't I? Anyway, I'm just going to take a moment now to refine the design using all of the things that we've covered so far. Well, I think it's shaping up rather nicely. So next I'm going to select all of the text elements. And then with these selected, right click and group them together. Now I can grab the rectangle tool and then click and drag anywhere. And I'm going to create another rectangle that fills the entire artboard. Now we need to make sure that this rectangle is on top. So if it isn't already, right click, arrange and bring to front. And then from the swatches panel, I'm going to select a nice vibrant color. I'm going to go with a blue. And if I select opacity, located in the transparency panel on older versions of Illustrator, from the drop down, I could change the blending mode to color. And there we go, a quick and easy way to change the color of the entire composition without going through and having to change all of the swatches. You can also make this a global swatch because why not? And then with preview checked, I'm just going to take a minute to adjust the color sliders. There we go, that's about right. Just remember, if you would like to make any changes to your design, you will need to either lock or hide this color layer on top. But there we go, that wraps up the video, and that is how to create some 3D text in Adobe Illustrator, which is now somewhat outdated thanks to the latest update. But anyway, if you enjoyed this one, you can always subscribe for more, ring the bell for notifications, take care, and I'll see you next time.